Hey guys, welcome back. In this course, we're going to learn intermediate C sharp throughout a variety of lessons, starting off with a couple basics that I want to make sure we all understand before we move on. The first one being inheritance. Now, with it being a fundamental part of C sharp, perhaps it's not considered intermediate, but I want to make sure that we all understand exactly what it is and how we can use it before we move on to more advanced topics. So let's talk about what inheritance is, and then we'll get into writing some code and seeing how we can use it for everyday projects. So what is inheritance? Let's say we have a sword and a staff. They're both weapons, right? They would probably both have an attack method. They'd probably both have a name. They probably both have a stats list of some kind. Because they are weapons, they would need those stats, and they would have a name to identify them, and they would have the method to perform an attack, or multiple methods to perform an attack. They would also have differences where you have a staff that would cast a projectile and then a sword that would swing a certain distance and attack something like that. So there are a couple of differences there, but there are also a couple of similarities. And every weapon that we create would probably have similarities similar to a name, a stats list, and an attack method, right? We'll just say for our game, for the sake of this, uh, this lesson, that they would all have those three things. And it wouldn't make any sense to write those three things every time we create a weapon because they all share that. So how we can we do that? What we can do is we can create what's called a base class. And then we can have these other classes, say the staff and the sword and the dagger or whatever it might be, inherit that functionality from the weapon class. So the weapon class having the name, stats, and attack. Now when staff inherits from weapon, that makes staff a weapon. So now staff has a name, an attack, and a stats list without having to define it on the actual staff class. And we'll get into that. We'll actually use a couple examples throughout this lesson so you can definitely understand that. So let's look at this really quickly though. Class weapon, I'm going to define a weapon class. It has a stats list or dictionary, has a name property, and it has an attack method, like I said. And my staff and my sword also have this also has this functionality. So what I want to do is take sword and inherit from weapon. So now sword has an attack method, a name, and stats. And that's how inheritance works. I have a little semicolon, or sorry, a colon, and then the name of the class, the type of class that I'm inheriting from. But I also have something unique here to sword. It's not defined on weapon, it's strike length. That's because sword requires a strike length, let's say. Then I have a constructor that has a name. Name is not defined on sword, it's defined on weapon, but sword is a weapon, so sword has a name. Then I am also setting the strike length from the constructor. Now when I create a sword object, I can call the attack method on sword because sword, again, is a weapon. And we'll get to how that applies to stuff here in a second. So staff also is a weapon. So it has a name without defining it on staff because it is a weapon. And it has a projectile which is specific to the staff that I'm again setting the value to something in, in the uh, constructor. And before we get started writing code here, just a couple of important things to point out. Inheritance enables us to build a class based on another class. As you saw there, we're building the sword class based on the weapon class. So we don't have to rewrite that functionality to build the sword class. We can just build it on top of the weapon class. It defines and is a relationship between classes. Notice how I said that means sword is a weapon. That means staff is a weapon. I wasn't just saying that for fun. That That is what it means. So now sword is in fact a weapon type and staff is in fact a weapon type. And that means it has the exact same functionality available to it. The class that is being inherited is the base or super class, depending on your environment, or it could be a parent class. The class that is inheriting is the child class or subclass. And keep in mind, as you saw, this allows for greater code reusability. So I wrote weapon class once and staff and sword can both use a functionality from that without having to rewrite the functionality. It just inherits the functionality. So there's one class with that functionality, but now weapon and sword both have that functionality. And this is in fact an absolute fundamental part of OOP. Without understanding this, you will not understand OOP or C Sharp in general. And without this, it simply wouldn't make any sense. So now let's look at writing our own code for this 
we're going to build up a couple of classes, very simple classes that will represent objects that we can talk about. So let's say we have in a game, we'll have NPCs in the world, just just characters in the world. We'll have Bob and Nicholas and, and Tommy. We have these three characters and they'll all have a speak method and they'll all have a name. And when they speak, they'll say, hi, my name is Nicholas or hi, my name is Tommy. So when they do that, that's the exact same functionality for each character, right? But then again, they may have something unique to them. They may have, one guy may have the ability to repair weapons for you. One guy may have the ability to turn carrots into trees for you. I don't know what they would do for you. Maybe something weird like that. But they all do have, in fact, a speak method that allows them to speak their name and then a name property that allows them to have a name defined. We know that. So what we can, what can we do? Well, we can take that functionality, extract it from those characters we just defined in our heads, and put that functionality in a shared class, in a class that Nicholas and Tommy and whoever else I said can inherit that functionality from. And there'll be separate classes that will become child classes of the character class. So let's look at that really quick. I'll create a class called character. Simple as that, I have a character class. Now I said characters will all have names, right? So we can create, we'll just use a variable for now instead of using properties so that we can talk about properties a bit later on. I am going to have a public string. It'll be called name. So character has a name. I then want a method that allows me to speak. Remember that? So I want to do speak. And what this is going to do is it's going to say, hi, my name is name, but character doesn't have a name. It's just, a, it's just a character class. We don't have anything defined for it. We'll define that in a constructor in our child classes. Let's say we have Nicholas in the constructor. It'll set its name to be equal to Nicholas, but name is not defined on Nicholas. It's defined on character. And that's going to show us how that works when we inherit functionality. So speak, what it's going to do is console.writeline. And I'm going to use a dollar sign token there. And then my string. And this allows me to simply implant variables as tokens throughout the string. And we'll know at, uh, at runtime, in fact, it'll, we'll know what the value of that variable is. So I can say, hi, my name is name. Simple as that. So now it'll actually print out the name whenever we call speak on whatever character that we create. So now let's create a class that will inherit from character. We'll create a class. We'll say, as we said, uh, Tommy. So public, or sorry, we're going to do a class that is Tommy. And Tommy is simply going to have a constructor, CTOR, tab twice. And that's going to build a constructor for the class I'm currently in. And up to this point, I expect you to understand what a constructor is. Up to this point, in fact, I expect you to have a beginner understanding of C Sharp and programming in general. You need to know what a class is, what a variable is, what a method is, what a constructor is, things like that. And we're going to build on top of that knowledge. So in my constructor, I am going to set the name field to be equal to Tommy. But to do that, I have to be able to inherit this first. So to do that, I'm going to simply have a colon and then character. And that's going to inherit all of the functionality from character. And now it's available to me in Tommy. Notice all I have to do is say this dot name is equal to, and I'll say Tommy. And in fact, I don't have to use this for this object instance to make it less confusing. We won't do that. Name is equal to Tommy. So now whenever I create a Tommy object, which is in fact a character object. When the constructor is called, it is going to set the name value from character, which Tommy is a character, to Tommy. Very simple. So now what I can do to show you how this works, I can create a Tommy object. So I'm gonna to say Tommy, and we'll call it Tommy, is equal to new Tommy, right? Very basic constructor there. I'm just gonna initialize it using the constructor just like that, and it's going to set the name to be equal to Tommy. So now what I can do is say Tommy.speak and it's going to console at right line. Hi, my name is ideally Tommy. But notice this, this is a Tommy object that is referencing the method speak now. And Tommy doesn't have speak defined, but character does. So it just kind of reinforces that Tommy 
is in fact a character. And to show you how this works, I'm going to add a console dot, uh, dot read key, and that's going to allow us to see the log in the console, and then whenever we hit a key, it'll go away. So intermediate core is going to run that. So hi, my name is Tommy. Hello world. So now what I want to do is show you something else. You know how I keep saying Tommy is a character? I keep saying that because that's important to understand. By inheriting it, Tommy becomes a character. And the way that can work here is I can say character Tommy is equal to a new Tommy. So I'm creating a new object of the type Tommy, but I can store that reference of that object in character because Tommy is a character and we get the exact same result. Pretty cool, but that doesn't do anything beyond what we could have done inside character or inside Tommy. So what I want to do is create another class and I want to call it Nicholas, Nicolar, Nicholas. And it's also going to inherit character. So it's also going to be a character and the constructor, public Nicholas, just like that. And I can set the name to be equal to Nick. So now I have another class that is inheriting from the same base class as Tommy, but I didn't have to write anything else in the base class. It just gets to use the functionality directly by inheriting it. So now what I can do is I can create a new Nicholas and there's a train. Give me a moment. All right. It's mostly gone. So I'm going to name this Nick and then I'm going to do Nick dot speak. And Nick has a speak method again, because Nicholas is also a character, which is where speak is defined. So now when I run this, we should say, uh, see, uh, hi, my name is Nick, as Nick is the name that we defined. There it is. Pretty cool. So that is the, the basics of inheritance. You see it right there. One thing I want to show you, or just at least talk about for now, is if character also inherited from something, let's say character inherits from a class called entity. It doesn't exist, but let's say it did. Entity defined um, health and it defined movement code. It defined uh, sprite rendering stuff, whatever it might define. Entity defines that. Character inherits that. So character is now an entity. So now character has the movement code. Character has the health code, all that stuff. What that means is Tommy, which is a character. Now Tommy is also an entity because character is an entity. It's an inheritance chain that if you follow it all the way, all the way down, everything that it's inheriting from before that, it is that. And that's the whole point of this. So if I were to do that, and this is going to break because I don't have an example written for this, but I could say entity Nick is equal to new Nicholas. And that would actually work for me because of the way inheritance works. Pretty cool, right? And we'll be using inheritance throughout this course. So if it didn't exactly click right here, Give a couple of the lessons a try, but then if not, uh, feel free to head over to the forum, forum.gamegrind.io, or leave a comment down below if there's just something else you need to get this to click, as it is a little tricky at first, but it's also fundamental to understanding C Sharp and object-oriented programming in general. So in the next lesson, we're going to look at polymorphism, which again uses inheritance very, very deeply. And it's also another pillar of programming or object oriented programming more specifically. So my name is Austin and I will see you in the next lesson.